All right, thank you. Uh, it's good to be here. Uh, how have you guys been? Good? All right. So uh, I have uh, just a few minutes here so that I don't go over my slot um, and so that I don't sound like I like the sound of my voice. Um, I was told to speak about the art of building. That's what I was told to speak about. So I, may, I hope not to veer off tangent, just bring me back. So I would like to know uh, people who I'm speaking to. Um, so are you all a group or from different places? Different places. Okay, so what do we do? What do you do? Student architect? You work with Lagos State. What's your name, please? Ah, my name's sick. Okay, that's all right. No wonder you were clapping very... Ah, I was wondering. All right, what's your name? Tell me. Okay, once in a while, I think, in order not to use the time to ask for all our names, I think I'll, I'll just start. So, um, the art of building. It sounds very mystical. The art of building. So, I went to check for the definition of art, you know, just for the, you know, uh, meaning. It's, it means ex expression or application of a human creative skill or imagination. The baby wants to talk also. All right. Then building an action or trade of constructing something. So the art of building. I'm going to focus on maybe building a business, right? And what does it take to build a business? So building a business means... Let's start with this. When we want to put up a structure, we need to have like a 3D. We need to have drawings. Hence, we need to have a vision. Right? We need to have an idea of where the window will be. And who has seen those buildings that one door leads to, um, a window leads to the balcony or something? All those funny, yes, you can see that they didn't have anything in mind. So it's very important to have a vision. I'm not here to aspire to Maguire, but you need to have a vision. So uh, I did a research on this guy, Eliud uh, Kip, Kipchoge, that really fast guy. The guy ran uh, a marathon under two hours. Some people can't understand that. Have you ever run a marathon here? Do you run? You run, eh? <laughs> You, you run for your life. If you are living in Lagos, it's an extreme sport anyway. So um, you run for your life. Poverty. And you are running towards safety, right? Yeah, so. But I mean physical work. Physical running. <laughs> Do you run? Who runs here? Dr. Foy says he, he runs. Who else? Who jogs, walks, recreation? Oh, you walk? Ah, ah, all of you. Who runs? <laughs> How many, I'm going back to run. Okay, so the guy, the guy, the guy ran a marathon, 42.195 kilometers, under two hours. I wonder why, but they're paying him for it anyway. So, and he's the fastest. I can bet you that you can get to the finish line before him with what I'm about to teach you. I can bet you, you can get to the finish line before him. I mean, in less than 20 minutes. Who believes that? How many believers, please? One, two, three, four, five. Why do you believe that? Come again, because I said so. Oh, I'm holding the mic, so I can cap anyhow. Thank you. You see, oh, which track record is that? I don't run track on, anyway. All right, all right. So, um, I can... Bet you that what I'm about to tell you will help you get to the finish line before him. Provided we don't tell him the finish line. Provided we give him the wrong place, put him in a wilderness, no direction, he'll just keep running. And you just walk. In fact, waltz. You waltz to the finish line. So if you think that even the fastest runner cannot win you, win me, 
I wanted to yap some people. Wind you, hypothetically, not you here, but you, you know yourself, with your lazy, mm, right? Wind you. Why do you think that you can get to any finish line when they, you don't even know where you're going? There's no aim. You must know where you're going for you to be able to evaluate your resources. So if you don't have any vision, see, I bet you, we, you know, God has been kind to me. We've built a business that is valued. It's not small, you know. It's not there yet, but hey, a, a few of us know Fruity Life, don't we? Okay. A few of us have heard of School of Growth. All right, good. So, um, one of the things that helped me is vision. So, let me tell you the story. I wanted to, in 2008, I wanted to start Change Maker. I wanted to change the world. I registered a business called Change Maker Events. I'm going to do events like this, or like School of Growth, or like this, Life Hack. And I'm going to empower people. I didn't start by saying we should please applaud him for this event. Would you please put a, a round of applause? He could have just been chilling, you know, but he decided he wants to change lives. And sometimes you just look at yourself and say, when you see the bill, who sent? Why? You know, like, why don't you, like, the, like he asked, why? You know, so I wanted to change lives. And I said, I registered Change Maker event. I said, we're going to go, we're going to organize, guys. Students from all around the world, people will come together, we're going to train them. And I found out that venues are not free. I found out that all them uh, screens, recording, bless you can't, you can't pay for it with bless you. You have to give value. And that was why I started Fruity Life. Story was, okay, I need to start a business that can fund the lifestyle. You can't change the world on the hungry stomach. Maslow's hierarchy of need, right? If you're still dealing with security, you can't be talking about self-awareness. It's because, it's because by security and shelter, you can't, if you're still, people are chasing you with gun. You are in a war-torn zone and you're thinking about giving back. You can't think about giving back when you are running for your life, right? So, we started the business, Fruity Life, and for the first few years, pick up a, a few stories or points in the stories because there are some things I learned. We registered it officially in 2011. And for four years, it was just, so it was in a school area. So when they're in session, there's money. When they are not in session, there's no money, right? But one thing I found out is I learned from books that you must feed your business first. I've seen people start businesses and they eat the capital. They eat what they're meant to plow back. I was foolish with spending. Quite all right. But I made sure that what was needed for the next week, next two weeks, was on ground. Always feed your business. As I'm telling my stories, I'll just be telling you some things I learned along the way. When you feed your business, then with 2%, you feed, or with 2% returns from your business, you can fund your lifestyle. But if you want to fund your lifestyle with what is meant to be a seed, because you want to show everybody that you, are, that you graduated with that, I've made it, right? It will get to a point you can't keep up. You need fuel for the journey. Always feed your business. Always. And that thing I learned was every time a cu uh, customer said, I need this, I want this, we we'll just listen, okay, yes, ma, yes, sir. We go and add it. So the question was, listen to your business. It is always talking to you. Your business is always saying something. Your business is always saying something. I, I kid you not. It's always telling you the next step. Your blueprint is with your customers. So I was reading a book um, a while ago, um, I think early last year, and um, I read of the story of Airbnb. 
So the guy, when they started early, he went for, I don't know if it's Y Combinator or something, one of these accelerator uh, programs. And the guy asked him, he said, why are you here? You should be with your business, where your business is, where you, most of your customers are. The guy flew there, I think it was New York, I don't know yet. I, I can't remember, rather. Or I'll remember. I like saying I'll remember, I don't like saying I can't remember. I'm programming my, programming my brain to remember. All right. So, I read in the book that a guy went there and he booked a room in the Airbnb. He booked a room in the Airbnb and asking for feedback for asking for feedback from the customers that hey, um, what do you think we can do better? And the customer went into the room and brought like a couple of files and gave him more or less. Or everything he wanted them to do. All the mistakes that he, he thought that they were making and things that they could do better. Oh my word. So his blueprint or his success was with his customer. They are the ones, you get, they are the ones with the pain points. They are the ones dealing with customers. I learned from that day that your customers have your blueprint. One of the things that we, we see in Fruity Life is when we start hearing three, four, maybe in like 10 stores, customers can say, uh, we want this, we want this. We just collate the feedback and we look at the top two. And that's the next product we bring out. And it works like, it, it, works, it works every time. I'm telling you practical stuff. It works every single time. So listening to my business and for four years straight, we are spending anyhow, but I made sure that the business was fed. And I said, why am I doing a seasonal business? Why can't I do something that runs for 365 years? Uh, days, sorry. How many? I know my two seller. 365 days. So went to look for some places, uh, some short terms here and there. Some people hear the idea, try to steal it. But we got our big break. You know, got some stores in some high traffic locations. We have a store in the Kedja City Mall. I'm sure who knows our store in ICM? Okay, a couple of you. Okay. So <laughs> she's really with me and smiling. Thank you for keeping us in business. All right. So we got some places there. Then it was no longer seasonal. Then for a while it, it felt like a side hustle. Like I did elect elect. What am I doing with fruits? Water and the uh, elect, they don't, it will just blow, it will spark, right? So it was the side hustle trying to just get it done till I can do something. You know, I'm an astrophysicist, I'm a, an engineer, I'm doing, you know, I'm a start, you know, all those fancy names. But I found out that Cold Stone is just selling ice cream. Chicken probably is selling rice. Yeah. Otuma Gaddafi said he was just dealing with uh, our excreta, the mobile toilet. He said, mm, money know the smell. The mm, if I, you figure it out. Yeah. So he said, the money, though he's dealing with excreta, he does, the money does not smell. Right? Then I focused on it. And that focus came not too long ago. So up until up until 2020. In fact, because I thought it was a side hustle, I was taking money from the business to fund something else. And some of it were not working. Most of it <laughs> didn't work. Thank God for some that worked. So it was later I, I said, wait, this is your side hustle is funding you, funding others, and funding a new business. What are you doing? And when we decided to focus, COVID, you know, taught us a lot. We invested, who here heard about food jar? Oh, <laughs> you raised your hand before I said it. We lost a lot of money. I mean, in USD, we lost a lot of money. It took about a year to pay back. I mean, a lot. Trust me. I, 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 if, if it was not being recorded, I would have told you. It was a lot of money in USD. So we had some, and we had to take loan for some because we knew that we wanted to restructure. Then I learned something in, in Fuja. You must do your research. 
R&D, literally, research and develop yourself to be, to be able to do that thing. I know development in that development space is different. For me, I take it literally. I ask myself, this vision, what is between me and my goal? That's what be, I learned that from Bill Gates. What is between me and my goal? Yes, it's massive, it's big, it's daunting. I agree, that's a fact. Can I change it? No. Can I reduce it? No. So what is between me and my goal? I then do self-evaluation. What are the skills I have? What, what can I do? Do I have relationships? Do I have people who can give me cash? Do I have people who can give me, maybe not cash, but their own resources, their own network. Network is a currency. There are people that we've called. <laughs> anyway, it's live, right? But, oh, it's not live. Okay, anyway, anyway. You can edit a bit. Okay, anyway, I'll just say what, what, can be, what can be said. I'm just saying that there are some people, there are some people, I hope I'm not a nightmare to you recording. I'm moving around. Okay, all right. So there are people that you can call, and what has been giving you so much headache, they help you solve it. So there was a lady who owns a chain of businesses. I think she has about 22 of those around Lagos and some other places. And she was calling me, ah, this person is giving us so much wala. I said, ah, wait, you know this person? Yes, you know this person? Yes. Ma, hi, ma. Excuse me, ma. Auntie, I. Why are you calling me? Call this. Eh, it's just because I don't want to go over the person. Sometimes, I found out, oh, this one is, I don't say, I'm not saying, telling you to do it, too. Oh. I'm just telling you what happened. Sometimes, you have to show some strength before you become friends with law enforcement. If you don't have relationship, just do the, you know, do the right thing already. But when they are passing their boundaries, I'm just saying this, you can edit this away, help me throw it away. Right? Sometimes you show strength before you become friends. So they know that they are not your, it's, it's the relationship dynamics. These people know that I can shake this person up, I can call this person up any day. I say, eh, you flaunted this law, this and this. There was, okay, so uh, for Fuja, back to Fuja, I learned that you must do your research on development. We tried to do food that was cheaper than mile 12. So we were bringing trucks from the north. You know, from the farmers, there are off takers who later send uh, sell to people in the market. Those in the market will come bring the truck down. Some people in Mile 12 have, some people in the market, but some people just bring trucks down who will later sell to the marketers. There many layers of middlemen. Then I said, ah, why not just, you know, cut the middlemen? Speak to the farmers and my brothers and sisters. Um, I'm alive, that's all I can say. So sometimes trucks get missing. A full load Full truck of tomatoes. <laughs> it does it <laughs> off grid. We saw the truck maybe three or four days later. Many of these drivers have families in different places. They can have in Lagos, have in so so so. Oh, you know right? You are nodding. Okay. So they have families in the. So they can just do and undo. So I found out that you may need to have relationship with their associations there, people who know where their children work at school. Who know where their wives work? Who know everything about them? Then, in Lagos here, we tried to do some marketing and all. But some goods were getting bad. We're in Mile 12, they would sell us Esha. We, you know, we had shoulder pad. We had a brand to keep. Then, while we were at it, a friend's father who had been supplying Mile 12 for about 15, 20 years, he said, have you done your r and I said, ah, I'm sure it can work. You know, aspire to Maguire, we can do this, we can make it work. He said, mm, think about it too. Then, later on, I found out that I'm paying PE. They're not paying PE in Mile 12. I'm paying FIRS. They're not paying FIRS in Mile 12. Paying LRS. I'm paying pension, housing, different other things. They're paying a number of staff. They are using power, alternative power. Some things have to remain cold. 
So you keep burning through cash. And it was personal cash we didn't raise. Keep burning through. A truck is missing. You get another truck. In fact, you have to get like two trucks. One from Joss. One from maybe Kaduna or something. Then you get yam from so 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 Maduguri. So if I if I had done my research, I wouldn't have done that. Or oh, they started created the demand. Start from Mount 12. Mark it up with just five percent. Create a demand. I'm telling you for free if you want to do it. Create a demand because that place needs disruption. You can't hold people, you can't always be smelling like gutter just because you want cheap prices. That's what we, well, that's what we try to do. So back to the story. So Fruity Life was funding all that. Then I think it was after COVID, I said, see, I'm going to drop every other thing <laughs> and focus on Fruity Life and two other you know, ideas that are working. And from then, from COVID, which we had about um, one to about four, four stores, now we're 18. And we're going, and we have just started. We have just started, as it were. So thank you. We've just started. So if I had done the evaluation, I wouldn't have done some things. But hey, it, it's so that you guys can learn a thing or two. So um, I'll talk about imagination. I'll just talk about principles that helped me build. I have very few minutes. Principles that helped me build. Imagination. Imag <clears throat> imagination. I, I appeal to you. Have thinking time. I appeal to you. Many of the people that you love and respect, they think a lot. Some people do it in the, with negative energy. They do some, you know, all these occult and the likes. Many others do it with the right spirit, right? Have your thinking time. Nothing, okay, I'll take a passage from the Bible. Um, I can take a passage from anywhere. I've taken from books. I'm also taking from the Bible, okay? So he said, nothing can be withheld from them which they have imagined to do. Some guys wanted to build a tower that would get up to the heavens. And, you know, right? Oh, he said it already. Come again? Everybody got that. Okay. Did somebody say it already? Okay, okay. He mentioned it a bit. Very good. So your imagination is powerful. If you can't imagine it coming to pass, you can't see it. Life, when he said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, he wasn't talking to Christians alone. It's the mandate to mankind. He wasn't talking to a particular religion, Muslim or any. It's a mandate to mankind. You have the ability to be fruitful. You can multiply. You can replenish the earth. You can be a legislative arm on earth. You can determine, I don't like this policy. And you sponsor movies that show that you don't like it. Have your imagination. So why am, why am I, I'm telling you some points on why you should be wealthy. And to be wealthy, you need the imagination. Many of them said they always knew they'll be wealthy. They just knew. Many of them, the uber wealthy guys, they had a vision. They had where they wanted to get to. They just knew that they couldn't be poor. And it wasn't by faith. It was just a knowing, right? Maybe by divine orchestration, they were meant to do something on earth. We were meant to be an instrument. Nebuchadnezzar was an instrument. You don't have to like him. He can be a wicked king watching people burn. How did he see the fourth man? He watched them burn. They were wicked guys. So, but in God's scheme, he was necessary. And even you may need to serve such people. You may be a Joseph. You may be a Pharaoh was considered a god. Right? And he, could, he had magicians that could turn rods to snake. He had several gods. That's why I like the story of, of Exodus. When God confronted them, all their gods, every single one of them, the one of fertility, the sun god, everything, he, he dealt with them one after the other to show that the, the magicians came and said, this is the finger of the gods. You know, so... Um, I'm going off tangent. Let's come back. 
have imagination. Where do I want to be? Where do I want to be? That vision is possible. I promise you. It's just the resources. You just need to know what resource do I need. What, what do I need to get? So, um, when you do your self-evaluation, you find out, and uh, sorry, I'm trying to get something here. So, aha, once you have your imagination, you have your vision, you have your imagination. Imagine you take an hour, and they give you codes. Imagine you take an hour on a daily basis to imagine it. You print it out, you paste it there. You speak it every time. You not, not just, you have to agree. Hi. Okay. Imagine you speak it every time. And you see it every time. You see, one of the things that make me like David, I love David a lot. Sorry, I'm, I'm using, but it, it's, it's allowed. Okay. David, if we didn't read Psalms, who know who David was? Who? <sighs> I'll lift up my eyes onto the hills. Well, so my, help come, my help comes from the Lord. And he will encourage himself again. So David was a speaking man. Ah, no wonder I didn't lose. He was constantly speaking. He said, when Absalom, I think it's Psalm 3 or 2, when Absalom came around, ah, they increased that trouble me. Many are they that I but thou, Lord. So I acknowledge the reality. It's not, uh, ah, God, they are dealing with my enemy. No. Ah, God, this is how I feel. Oh, I feel like I have a cap. I feel like... I feel like I don't know where to go. I don't have the ideas. I feel like life is passing by. But you are my strength. You are my direction. Do you know that Psalm 23, in contemporary terms, David was a shepherd boy. In contemporary terms, he says, the Lord is my chairman. The Lord is my sponsor. I shall not want. He was using his own contemporary terms. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my chairman. I shall not want. The Lord is my sponsor, is my Godfather, is the one speaking on my behalf. The Lord is my hey, you can call it that. The Lord is your is your leader, is your direction. You can't be stranded. Oh, there are challenges in the world. Dollar is 2005. Ah, I out earn the dollar. I out earn it. So those are some of the things you should do in your imagination time. You speak it. It's called, this book of the Lord shall not depart out of your mouth. Out of your mouth. You meditate on it day and night. Observe to do all that. He said, then shall you make your way prosperous. You are the one that will make your own way prosperous. And you will have good success. Alright? So imagination. Imagination. You must have the vision. You must have imagination. You must have faith that is possible. There are people who are trying to do evil things and they have faith that it is possible. How much more you? Once you have the vision, okay, it can't be done now. Okay, that's all right. Whatever my hand finds to do, I'll do well. I'll keep doing it. I'll keep increasing. I'll keep doing it. Do you, do, you, do you get it? So, but make sure that you know that it is possible. I've spoken about R&D. Spoken about evaluation. Once you know... We are now talking about strategy. Strategy means how do I get there with my resources? That's your strategy. So many times we ask ourselves, so we had a target of getting to a number of stores last year. We were shy by a percentage. We didn't hit it, you know. And um, we did just five new stores last year. And we did some renovation of four extra, which is about like doing a new one. And... We were shy because we underestimated the resources that we would need. And we underestimated macroeconomics. Things were getting expensive. So you, now you have to overestimate <laughs> what the dollar can get to. And factor into your business plan. So, you know, I learned from one of my mentors. He said when they were doing the business, they had a filling station, a couple of filling stations. And one of them was robbed three times in two months. People were like, that's bad for business. He said, that's one of the most profitable stores. He said, what the third world guys break their head over? Hey, first world guys, they factor it into their business plan. What you know may happen as the worst possible case. 
factor it in. Write it down that this may occur. There's the plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, plan F. If you had to depend, depend on God, but he gave you a brain for a reason. Not to be done. Not, he knew you had to exercise it, right? So he said that was one of the most profitable businesses or centers or filling stations. Because they factored it into their business plan. So you go up and just say, ah, by God's grace. Yes, I understand. That person who doesn't believe in God is doing better than you. There are principles. While the earth remains, there are still principles. So there's a principle of excellence. There are principles that you have to follow. So there's the part of spirituality. See, if all you do is pray and you don't get to work, you don't strategize, you, you become resentful at a point because you feel like God is not hearing you. You become envious at other people's success. Many times, God come, if he looks around, who can do this job? Okay, I'm going to give this person. Is this king? He may be a hidden king. Well, back then, he may be a hidden king. I'm going to give it to him. So, do the work. Do the work. Strategize. Plan. Reach out to people. Talk to people. Those are, I'm just telling you, I have a few, few minutes left. Reach out to people. Talk to people. Right? In the multitude of counsel, there is wisdom. There is what? Safety. Thank you. You get your safety in the multitude of counsel. You know what I do for our people? Since I can't hire expatriates or experts. Now, okay, I have experts, but expatriates. What I do is, okay, I have a couple of friends who are good in their field. I just say, come. Hey, I would like you to mentor my accountant for a stipend. Any accounting question. This person is ICON certified, my accountant. This person is this, that, that. They are a team in that group. But any question you have, I'm not an accountant. I don't want see, ask, direct your question to this person. So the HR has a consultant who, who tells the HR what to do. Right? You get what I'm saying? And is relationship, more of relationship and less of money. They're doing it because it's me. All those friends that you have, let them mentor all your people to become like them. Win-win. These guys want to teach. These ones want to grow. And when they become better, you also become better. So um, leverage, relationship strategy. Um, okay. Tenacity. My God. You have to go, go, go. That's another principle. You have to go, go, go. So you want to have 10 stores this year. And you have maybe just random number. You have 30 million to start up a store, right? You have 30 million to start up a store. And you want to do 10 stores this year. And all you have in your account is just maybe 60. So the question is, you start asking yourself, what do I do? You have to do 10. You have to break it down. Okay, we can do one in the first two months. And the one that we're doing will produce a lot more money for us to be able to do two. Right? You have to keep going. You can't get, you can't get tired. One thing I learned from Kobe Bryant, he said... He didn't used to, even though this is very extreme. It's extreme, I'm telling you. He says, all this chit-chat, going hanging out with friends, he never did it. He was all about basketball. He was asked why. And he said, because he didn't want to retire and say, I wish I did more. I had the opportunity to do more, and I, and I couldn't. You must be tenacious. You must. You must keep going. When life knocks you down, when, not if. When life is testing you. You know, life brings some things. Have you gotten double whammy? You are dealing with something in your business internally, then government or one agency does, boom, and things are just happening. And you're like, wait a minute. Uh, where's my CV first? Let me, let me dust this thing. Life is trying to test. Who are you? What's your name? Where are you from? Why do you think you deserve it? Life is, you don't, de life got here before you. It owes you no jack, mm, owes you nothing, right? So life is constantly testing, constantly probing. Who are you? Who are you? You must be tenacious. You must get to the point that, see, I'd rather, <laughs> I can't do anything else. This is the life I chose. Like, like your, uh, 
like Nigeria president said, he said, <laughs> he said, don't pity me. I asked for the job or something. So like, that's Nigerian, <laughs> Nigeria's president. When life knocks you to the floor, don't stay on the floor. When you're walking and you trip, you don't sit down there and cry and throw a tantrum. No, you don't. You stand up and keep walking. You have a flat tire on a journey. You don't turn back. You don't. You keep going. These are some of the things. Some of my friends, let me know. They say, some of my friends say, ah, SJ. Some people call me SJ. Some people call me Mr. Who, who has seen my podcast? Mr. Jax Africa. Okay, only him. Please subscribe, follow, share, click the notification button. Or right, like, you know, I'm learning that thing. The Holy Spirit said I should start. I, I don't like being in front of the camera anyway. So they say, you come and motivate me for the year. Come on. Because you have to keep going. Your report card at the end of the year is the accumulation of all you did. Ah, if you just let today go, you do it tomorrow. You're creating a habit. You're building your mind. That's why even if you're working for somebody, putting your best, you're telling, you're training your mind to do better. Oh, you think that when you, I don't want to work for anybody, it's too stressful. You think you just come and just all day you'll be Netflix and chilling and be calling and say, how much did we make? Oh, we made seven million. Oh, okay. No, it doesn't work that way. You are going to work harder when you are building the foundation. And nobody will see it. Some people will laugh at you. And be okay. One of the things I say is, God, it's your business. Whoever takes the glory, takes the shame. It is God. I'm, I have nothing to prove. But I'm going to work very hard. You must keep going. You must keep going. Ah, dollar is now 2K. My business, what can we do? If you ask, I wish I could call some of my staff. And they say, ah, sir, I've tried, I've done this and done this. I say, so are we helpless? Is it, that's a gentle reminder. Sometimes they come at me. I say, are we helpless? You see the face change, like, oh my God. Okay, I have to think outside the box. Then they go back and come back with a solution. Boom! A learning experience. Growth experience. Growth moment. Are we helpless? Many times, when you're probing and say, ah, this is the reason, ah, or they may say, I don't know why this, this and that is frustrating. You ask the why of the why. Somebody is coming late. There are four whys. Ah, why did you do this? I did it because this person, ah, why didn't you come show up uh, to help this person? Um, I didn't show up uh, because this person is very cocky. Ah, why do you think he's cocky? Because he said this to me. So it's really not about the job. You don't find out the hidden things. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Then, uh, mistakes that I made back then. The flip side of going hard is jumping in with two feet. Do your R&D. Don't use all your money. To don't, don't take a loan to start a business you've never done before. Never take a loan to start a business you've never done before. Have a skin, have skin in the game. Let there be growth potential. Aha! I know that with a few injections, we can do X amount. This is the POC, proof of con this is the proof of concept. That way, it's believable. In fact, nowadays, you come to meet me for investment, even if it is $1,000, even if it is 1,000 Naira, come to meet me for, what have you done? Do you have skin in the game? Oh no, ha, you want to use other people's time for me. We that we invented it. You know, other people's money, other people's time. We invented it, but I don't, I, <laughs> when I'm saying we invented, I mean, we've learned from it. Most of, most of the business is, you know, my money. So don't jump in with both feet. Do your research, have skin in the game. Um, don't eat your business's future. Please, make sure you feed your business. Just have a policy that I will live on maybe 15% of my profit and nothing more. So that will even motivate you to make sure that your business is able to give you so much that 15% is more than enough for your, for your lifestyle and for your family and to give back, right? You're going to build, 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 out earn inflation. Yeah. Then... Okay, treating it like a side hustle, then hire right. The first set of people you hire will determine your culture. You may have excellence, integrity, impact, 
godly, God's business in Jamaica, this on your, on your statement. But this first set of hires would determine how you organize, the organizational culture. I promise you. If you hire right, you know, you may say, ah, that person is too expensive. Ask yourself the question. Many experts pay for themselves. When you hire somebody, you hire a salesperson, and you say, this is your salary. Maybe before then you've been paying 50K a salary. This person is asking you for 180. <gasps> and you're just starting. You know, you're asked, you know, I wanted to make a joke anyway. So, and you're like, ah, 180K. The, even me, my salary is 120. But the person shows you track record, right? I've done this, 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 this. Then you can say, get me to this point. And this is your bonus. Most of them, the only time you may need to pay, you may need to feel it is the first, maybe first quarter or first few months, first month, second month. By the third month, if the person is really good, many A-class people, they, they thrive on delivering. They, in fact, it's so bad that if you are an A-type person and you see two, three other B-type people, you may resign. If that's all, like these people are not as, in fact, they make you feel like, ah, is it your father's business? Why are you working this hard? So, but eight type people want to deliver. When you hire the right people, culture is great. Yes, you may need to keep tweaking them. They, they have their excess, ex, excessiveness. Eh? Excesses, thank you very much. There's somebody I call dictionary in my, in my management team. When I just get, uh, when I get to the middle of a word that I don't know, the, I just, sorry, dictionary, then she gets, yeah. So, they have their excesses. Your job will be to just manage, give them direction. But guess what? You guys are going to outperform the people in the market. Hire the right set of people. And last two things. My time is up. Decide fast, move faster. Decide fast, move faster. So there are two brands, three brands, three major brands in, in Nigeria currently. There are two legacy brands from the US. And one, they do drinks, fizzy drinks. Whatever the name is, you know, is in your mind. But the Nigerian brand has many products. Many, from apple to pineapple to tropical. But the legacy brands just have the orange, cola, and the, come again, lemon and lime. Thank you. You guys, now they get time. Why? Some company, some people are agile, nimble, but others have to get clarity, uh, clarification or authentication or approval from head office. And before they can move, <gasps> a mammoth, how slow they can move, while these guys are sprinting and growing. Decide fast. Make sure that you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to have HR, finance, this. Somebody started it. What does my business need? Okay, chief happiness manager. Chief, whatever it is, you don't have to box yourself as it were. Decide, let your business tell you what it needs and put the right people in the right position. Then lastly, garbage in, garbage out. How your life is, is what you put into it. Intentionally or unintentionally. You not making a decision to be excellent is a decision in itself. If you don't like the output, change the input. It's as simple as that. If your life is not going the way, David will look at the life and say, mm -mm -mm. Ah, this is how my life is going. The Lord is my shield. The Lord is my exceeding great reward. I will not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day. So it keeps putting in the right thing. Don't be sentimental about a staff or a person or a colleague that is not working well. If the results, if the person cannot give you the result now, PIP, the Performance Improvement Program, if that does not work, ah, you know, as a secondment to somewhere that, you know, they, they need the person. You get what I'm saying? Don't be sentimental. What you see eventually is what you put in. Life is unfair. But sometimes, many times, life just dishes it to you after probing you. 
it gives you what you see the result. So if you want to have 20,000 customers and you don't put in, you don't create a system that will give you 20,000, that can accommodate 20,000 customers, life will tell you, show you your, your report card, your system is not strong enough. From the book Atomic Habits, he said you don't rise to the level of your plans. You fall to the level of your systems. A 15 kVA gen can never carry a 50 kVA load. It will break down. You must keep building your capacity to the point where I need to carry one 50 kVA load. I have 75. I'll keep building. I'll keep growing. And I um, think those are some of the... I had to rush some and jump some. But thank you very much for listening to me. I hope it was impactful.